Whatever defense plays the best and can adjust the best mid-game is going to win this one. Boston College showed versus Kansas that they weren't able to do much in terms of changing defensively. They need to do a better job today. Wake Forest won the toss. They defer to the second half, so we'll get a look at Nick Skiba here. One of the top kickers in the country, Toe Meets Leather, and we're underway at Boston College. Travis Levy just lets it sail over his head. BC will take over at their own 25. You mentioned how well they are running the football. Well, the big reason why is we're going to give some love to the offensive line. Gosh, they are some old, nasty players up on that offensive line. You look at them, and they, they're different. I talked to opposing coaches, and they're like, this is a unique offense. Well, it's what we're used to seeing back 20 years ago. They're going to fire off the ball, trying to be a bunch of road graders and knock the defense back. These old linemen can do it well. And as often, we'll see double tight end formation, which we do for Boston College to start the game. Here's Dylan. Can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll be dropped for a loss. Boogie Basham, we'll call his name often today. He's in on the tackle. And as we talked to the Wake Forest coaches, their defensive coordinator, Lai Hemphill, said they got to get some pressure and presence in Boston College backfield. They did it on the first play. Again to Dylan, he bounces it outside this time. Stiff arm can't get away from the initial tackler, and he'll be dropped for a game of just maybe a yard. So good pursuit by that Wake Forest defense. And that's a big play by Wake Forest. That those are the ones that we're used to seeing A.J. Dillon throw that stiff arm out, get that defender in the ground, uh, and then take off and run for another 40. Good tackle on that one. Boston College. Third and long for Boston College in their first possession. Brown sees something on defense, changing the call a little bit. Out of the gut. Time hits a receiver over the middle. It'll be a first down for BC. That's Benny Glines. He's a little bit of their Swiss Army knife. He does some of everything. Their captain, and he's their senior graduate student, fifth year senior. Trying to move quick. Dylan. Just having a hard time finding room at first. Just pick up another yard. He's got three carries for a total of two yards. We haven't seen much of Anthony Brown so far this game. He had that one nice pass over the middle, but he need, really needs to work on his completion percentage. He needs to get that up. More consistent plays on first and second down. Fake to Brown now. Fake to Dylan, rather Brown rolling out. In the traffic, and it's intercepted. Amari Henderson picks it off, and he'll be brought down at his own 42. And Amari Henderson with the interception, and if he didn't get it, Nasir Greer was right in behind. Anthony Brown needs, I just said, needs to be better on first and second down. And this is a pass that he seemed to force it as he's going. He sees two white jerseys around there. That's two. Don't force that in or just throw that out of bounds and live to play the next down. And now, now Boston College with one turnover on board. They're used to getting interceptions, not giving them away. First turnover, uh, first interception, rather, of the year for Anthony Brown. So Wake Forest, an opportunity to see Jamie Newman first off. The handoff to Carney. And he gets into the second level, give him eight yards on the play before Joe Sparaccio is there to bring him down. Kate Carney is the, the noted leader of this backfield, turning from an injury and big run on first down. Design run for Newman. Close to the chains. We'll have to take a look at where they spot it. Maybe just a few inches short of reaching the yard to gain. Both these teams, as you mentioned at the top, want to go really fast tempo. As soon as the official places that ball down, they're going to want to snap it. And they're subbing right now, which is the only reason why it's slowing down at all, but you're exactly right. Wake Forest is number one in the country in terms of number of plays run, and Boston College is number six. So they both are going to get a lot of plays in today. Third and short for Wake Forest in their first offensive possession of the game. Carney looks for some room, doesn't have much, but may have just enough to move the chains, and I believe he will. First down for Wake Forest, and we've talked about Kate Carney. We've seen him a bunch on this drive, but really, their, their receivers on this Wake Forest team, those are the guys who are superstars. Yeah, Jamie Newman is having success because he has these two gigantic wide receivers on the outside, and Sage Surratt and Scotty Washington, they are both men amongst boys. You see them on the outside. And they provide a second-level option for Jamie Newman. Once he pulls the ball out of the running back's belly, he finds those two targets downfield. 
And there you see that big mesh point that lasts, seems like it lasts forever, but Carney gets the carry, saw something that he liked, and he picked up six yards. Yeah, and, and that was not a missed snap or a missed cue or anything. It looks like the running back and quarterback just stopped, but they're just waiting for Boston College to commit, and then Cade Carney finds the hole, gets upfield. Carney lost the football there for a moment, but was able to get it back. Good gain on first down. Now Newman tucks it. He'll pick up another first down. He has room. Slides down at his own at the 33-yard line. Boston College, 33 after an eight-yard pickup and another first down. But I like that on Boston College's side. They said, okay, we're sending pressure. We're going to force your hand, make Jamie Newman make the right decision. Hold it ran for, for a good gain and first down there. It's going to be really interesting watching that communication between him and the running back and reading these linebackers and safeties. It's just a really cool offense to watch. Carney now out of the backfield, split at the top of your screen. Newman, quick fake, now he looks downfield, has Washington inside the 20, down to the 17. Big catch, he has a wide radius to catch the ball, so really anywhere Jamie Newman puts it, Washington can come down with it, and they did a little pump fake on a go and ran an in route. You don't usually see that. Great play call. Carney with the handoff, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. That'll be it. Carney, the senior from Advanced North Carolina, missed a couple of games with a hip injury. Came back last week, and only seven carries, but we thought it was good to get him just back into the actions so he can be closer to full strength, which he is today. Now split at the top of your screen again, empty backfield. Newman to his left again, hits Washington, who makes a great catch behind his back. And is inside the 10, doesn't quite get the first down, but good catch. Look at this grab. And he's wide open, really poor eyes with a linebacker, Joseph Sparacio, just missed a guy and let him wide open in the middle. Newman keeps it, shakes off one tackler, powers his way to three. He'll finally blow the whistle here, and he's going to be close to a first down. Looks like he got it. Look how many people it takes to tackle Jamie Newman. That's the quarterback. That's not a running back. That's not big number two on Boston Colleges. That's the quarterback. And he plays with effort and heart, and you see that time and time again, taking multiple guys to get him down. For all the success Wake Forest's offense has had this year, he's playing in the red zone. First opportunity today. Carney just looks for an opening. Bangs into that line, picks up maybe two yards. Good read by John Lamott on that one. First, this Wake Forest offense, if you see your gap is open, you need to shoot it, you need to take it. He did it on that play. Stop Cade for minimal gain. And Newman checks the call on the sideline. 11th play of this drive for the Deeks, first of the game for them. Reed look on offense. Give to Carney. Dances his way into the end zone for the score. Well, Warren Ruggiero saw exactly what I saw up here in the box. He saw some linebackers walked out. And one linebacker in the box for Boston College, he called that audible from the sideline and brought in another tight end to add as a blocker. And that elongated mesh point again allowed Cade Carney and Jamie Newman to read the defense and find out where the open man would be. Skiba with the point after try. It is good, and Wake Forest. Opens up the scoring here in Chestnut Hill. An 11 play, 57 yard drive, capped off by the captain, Kate Carney, finding Pater. Hailing Wake Forest 7 0 after the Deeks took their first offensive drive of the game right down the field. Kate Carney, 1,000 yard rusher last year. Off to a good start this year, even though he was banged up a little for a couple of games. He and that man right there, Jamie Newman, were the principals in that drive that lasted 11 plays and ended up as a score for Wake Forest. Don't you love that Kate Carney is now on kickoff? That kind of guy, isn't he? It's awesome. He wears the C on his jersey for a reason, setting an example for all of his teammates. He's going to do a little bit of everything. Skiba puts the ball in play, and Travis Levy with an opportunity now for a return from his own end zone, and he gets smacked down at the 18 yard line, falls forward. BC will take over from their own 20. Time now for Food Lions. Food for thought. 
Very interesting the way these two teams have gone about their business offensively this year. Yeah, they have, and they've both done it really well. It's, it's nice when you get a team that knows who they are, and you know your own personality, and you don't vary from that. That leads you to success, and Boston College doesn't do a ton of things offensively. They do them really well. Wake Forest does a lot of things and does all of them really well. BC out here to Kobe White, who loses his footing. So even when it looks like Boston College has something going, misfortune strikes the Eagles, and White lost his footing after a three-yard loss. Dazio has been a fan of what his offense has done so far this year. Screen to Flowers, bounces off one tackler, can't avoid the pursuit though, and it'll be another loss. Say Flowers, they need to get the football in his hands, and he's a big play waiting to happen, but not on that play. Yeah, they do, and it's interesting because they have talked about their struggles on four, first and second down through the air. They start out with two passes on this drive. They don't even give a chance for their offensive line to make plays because they're putting them out in space against defenders. And now it's third and 16. Time to change exactly where the Eagles find themselves. Tight end on the receiving end of that play. That's Hunter Long. Probably the most skilled tight end of this very, very skillful group. Four tight ends will play, two on the field on almost every play. But they come up short, so they'll have to punt. See, that's the frustrating thing. That's a great pass. And, and that was the first time that entire drive where you gave Anthony Brown the opportunity to throw the ball downfield to a playmaker. And it's a great game. 14-yard gain. It just when it's third, second and 15 or third and 15. It's not enough. Grant Carlson comes into punt for Boston College. Good punt into a steady breeze. The collision at the 29-yard line. Flags come out. Sage Surratt was down there to receive the punt, and Mediella Track buried him at the 28. That's going to go be a call against Boston College. Another mistake. Kick catch, interference, kicking team, number 25, 15-yard penalty, first down, timeout. And on this, you need to give them the ability to catch the ball all the way down to the ground. That's a bang-bang play. It looked like Ella Track was there you know, right after the catch, but might have been too soon encroaching into space. Wake Forest with their second opportunity. The Studio 8 update, Sam Howe not afraid, throwing the bomb over the top to Deami Brown. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, y'all. That's something to keep an eye on, that is for sure. That North Carolina team, something else at home. You know, they've got a nice atmosphere out there at Keenan Stadium now, and they are not going to be an easy out. They haven't been, and they promise not to be for the rest of the year. Deeks here already up 7 0, second offensive possession of the night. And it's slow handoff to Carney. And Newton got belted on that play. Carney picks up maybe a yard. Yeah, this is exactly what Boston College wants to do. They're going to bring a cross dog blitz, two linebackers on one blocker. And that just clogs up the gap inside. They're saying, okay, we're going to tackle both the quarterback and the running back. If you do that, we're coming right at you. Now Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, empties the backfield. Sign run for Newman. He was patient, waits for an open, he can't find anything. Gang tackled. Joe Lachetti was the first one there, and then his mates followed suit. Yeah, great play by Joe Lachetti. He's a 6'6", 260-pound redshirt freshman. He came in, BC has a tight end. And he worked on his hands and his size, and he got good pressure right there to take down Newman for the loss. Third and 10 for Wake Forest. Pressure coming, Newman gets rid of it, finds Washington. Beautiful catch inside the 20-yard line. Tate Haynes on the coverage. Washington, just a one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. No, nah, it's Mismatch. Such, such, a good, such a good play, but that, see, that's the problem. If you're going to bring pressure on the inside and force the throw or force the read, you got to match up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and Scotty Washington might expose you. This time looks for Carney out of the backfield. Stiff arm down to the 16. We talked to Bill Sheridan, Boston College's defensive coordinator, and he talked about bringing that pressure, and that was his concern, his young secondary, would they be able to handle those two big bodies on the outside? 
Carney looks for an opening now. Swift one tackle. Slides his way to about the 12. Guys, I caught up with Dave Clawson before the game and asked him what it had been like for Kate Carney these last few weeks not being able to get in there. He says obviously it was very tough. They had him available if they needed him, but good to get him some rest from that hip injury. And I asked him, what does it do getting him back? He says hopefully adds just another level to the offense. And we haven't called Kendall Hinton's number, but he's out there as well. Hopefully for Wake Forest, he'll be able to make an impact as well. Yeah, Hinton, uh, former quarterback, slot receiver for them. Had a hammy and missed the last couple of weeks here. <laughs> Just gets dropped. Oh, Max Richardson, he said, man, you don't come in this hole. This is my hole. And watch what he does right here. Watch him fill this gap. And he reads this play perfectly. Cross dog blitz again. John Lamont first, Max Richardson second. And he just lowers the boom. Okay, Carney. Welcome back, Kate. I like that guy, Matt Richardson. He plays some fire. We got to interview him a few weeks ago. Character. He is a character. That boy is smart. He's a smart player and a smart person. A great student athlete. Hunter's able to pick up just enough for the first down. So first and 10 for Wake at about the 10-yard line. Mike Palmer is there to make the stop here. Give Carney about two on the carry. So he's getting tough yards inside. He is. And, and, and Kelsey, you're exactly right. Having Cade Carney back adds that power run game. So he, he's the bruiser. He's the guy that when you have a safety down near the line of scrimmage, you can still give him the ball to run that safety over. And they've just been working him so far this this quarter. Senior just went over 2,000 career yards. And looking for a score. Takes the handoff up the middle. Powers his way to about the three. And his ability to, you see that like little hop step in the hole and burst forward and he he's not a huge guy he's 5'11 215 but when he starts moving forward he's like a little bowling ball in there and he's only he's the 13th player in Wake Forest history to rush for 2,000 yards there's a good group of players to be among congratulations Kate they'll split him out bottom of the screen third and goal for the Geeks Newman design run he's not going to go anywhere Right into the teeth of that Boston College defense. He didn't even lose a yard. And we talked earlier a little bit about the struggles that Wake Forest has faced in efficiency in the red zone. And Boston College is just keyed in. The number one person they need to look at is number 12. And they stopped it good there. They're, they're taking that chance. Man to man on the outside and daring. Jamie Newman to beat them through the air. Nick Skiba, he's a Lou Groza award candidate. Made 15 field goals in a row going back to last year. That's good. We're going to make it 16. And he really, does. He's a really good kicker. It's, it's nice to see a kicker like that in the ACC because we've seen so many miss. He's on the scramble, getting a touchdown pass over to Joe Reed. UVA up seven points, but we have Notre Dame coming back. Tony Jones Jr. runs it in for a five-yard score. Got a good one cooking in South Bend. All right, thank you, EJ. EJ Manuel in studio with the guys. We'll see them at the half. Ten to nothing here. Wake Forest on top of Boston College. Just one of a number of really important ACC games as now all these teams start to get cranking with the conference schedule. Steve is going to send it down. Travis Levy. I like this one, a yard deep, fumbles it, picks it right back up. Now he's in trouble. Ten, maybe just gets outside the ten to be brought down at the twelve. So Boston College already having a hard time offensively now, starting deep in their own territory. What a day it's been! I mentioned some key games last night. Duke with a resounding victory in Blacksburg, Virginia Tech. Their troubles continue. Pitt had a scare today after the big win last week against UCF. But they get past the blue ends, and Cam Akers will see him tonight against NC State. He's been carrying the load offensively, and now with Blackman's injury, maybe even more on his shoulders. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Duke looked so impressive last night for Virginia Tech. They are, Dave Cutcliffe has them rolling. Speaking of rolling, here's AJ. Out close to midfield, brought down at the 45. Usually just a matter of time before he breaks one. Picked up 33 yards on the carry, so BC out of trouble. Now, here's Zay Flowers. AJ in front as a blocker. Gets to the edge. 40. 
45, 30, has some blockers in front of him, down to the 25. Explosive plays, two in a row now for the Eagles. They hit them up the middle. Now they're going to sweep outside. Let's see if he stays in bounds. Kind of tight ropes. It looks like, yep, right there. He might have stepped out of bounds. But they want to move quickly before it's reviewed, and they won't get a snap off. Early on the field is a first down. The previous play is under review. Bob Welch, our replay official, will get to work for the first time today. We'll let you know what he says when we come back. Sage and Scotty just waiting their turns to get back out there on the field. The big question now is... How deep inside of Wake Forest territory will Boston College be scrimmaging after a great run by Zay Flowers? Did he step out of bounds at the 37-yard line? That's what our referee, Dwayne Height, and Bob Welch, our replay official, are discussing right now. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, right here. That foot, that left yep, foot. That foot's definitely out. Now it's a matter of whether that right, well, I don't think the right foot was out before. I think that's the first time he touched the chalk. After further review, the ball carrier stepped out of bounds at the 37-yard line. It'll be first down, Boston College at the 37-yard line. Please set the game clock to 1 minute 46 seconds. One four six. Good eye, Chris. Thank you, and thank you, Dwayne, for explaining that. There's Zay Flowers. 135 yards on just 10 carries this year for Zay. He's explosive. He's got that jitterbug mentality, and I think a couple years down his career, that's when he won't step out of bounds, right? He's still just kind of learning the feel of this game as a true freshman for this Boston College offense. In Boston College, they give to A.J. Dillon right up the middle, hurried up to the line of scrimmage, got in a tight formation, and then a jet sweep to their fast wide receiver. And that's what's so difficult is lining up in tight formations on defense when the other team's going hurry up. So often you see a hurry up. Please set the game clock for one minute, 46 seconds. One, four, six. So often you see a hurry up offense come out and be spread. It's a little easier for a defense to line up. This you got to be perfectly gap sound. Boston College took advantage there. With a minute 46 left in this first quarter. First time for BC in Wake Territory. Dillon cuts it back. Crashes into the defender before falling forward. A gain of four on the play. Royce Francis there to make the stop for Wake. So it's interesting. We're used to seeing Boston College just pound it early in the game and then go to the pass. This today they went to pass first, and now they're back to basics. Just feeding it to Dillon. Crashes into the defender, now bounces it outside. Wasn't able to keep his feet. Picks up three. It'll bring up third down. You see A.J. Dillon jogging off the field now. And unfortunately for Wake Forest, David Bailey, number 26, six foot one, 240 pound, yeah. bruising back <laughs> right in the game. One battering ram out and another one comes in. Mistake for Boston College on the move and they'll move back five yards. And this is what they can have happen, getting behind the chains. Yeah, and, and they did this too many times last week. We have a lot of penalty yards. Ball start, offense, number 78, five yard penalty, third down. Against Rutgers last week, they had so many pre-snap infractions on this offensive line, and that's you know that's the other part of, of going fast. You can't have those penalties. Tyler Rabel, the guilty party there. Mike Sun, freshman, getting the start at left tackle. It's a big third down, third and long now. Third and eight rather than third and three. All has to change on offense. Daly now picks up the rush. Tight end again. This time it's Burt. And he'll pick up the first down for BC. Just ran a simple sticks route. He got in a bunch, and all the players just ran to the sticks, turned around. On the first down. Now it's Bailey's turn. Again, puts his shoulder down and picks up a big gain on first down. Six yards, which is exactly what they want. Now they want to go quickly. That forward lean. David Bailey's just got his shoulders all the way out over his toes and just... Bouncing defenders out off. Out Travian Red down there. You see him for Wake Forest. Junior from Martinsville, Virginia. As you watch these running backs, you see AJ Dillon. It's funny. He he has players bounce off him and almost like hit his chest pad and bounce off him. And David Bailey is more of a forward lean runner. He just puts his shoulders right over his toes and just keeps on driving his feet and look right there I mean that is a good form tackle by red but 
It doesn't much matter when you have that big, massive boom <laughs> right in your shoulder pad. And, and when you're hitting people like that, hurting them, you know you're running hard. Just about every op opposing coach we've talked to this year, and we've done three Boston College games, says, look, A.J. Dillon is a stud. There's no question about it, but that number 26 is no slouch either. Yeah, and when you talk to Steve Adazio, you know, he might be biased, but he says, I have the two best backs in the country. He loves those guys, and he is perfectly confident in both of them to get the ball and make runs just like that. That'll be a highlight reel play for David Bailey. Final seconds of this first quarter to get the play off. Bailey will take the handoff. Again, bounces into the second level, keeping his feet before being driven down to the turf. Picks up maybe a yard. He's saying Bassey that's out of that end. corner spot first quarter. makes the stop, and that's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter. Wake Forest dominated offensively, building a lead, but here comes Boston College. When we come back, we'll see if they can put some points on the board. Fall day, Wake Forest with a 10 0 lead over Boston College. You ever go sailing in the Charles, you yourself? No, I have not. I would have loved to. I can see you, no mast on the sailboat needed. You're just holding on to the sail yourself, yes. standing in the middle of the boat. Yeah, very uh, Moana esque. I would just be <laughs> out there just cruising along. Well, Boston College shut out for the first time this season in that first quarter. They've been a first half team, but not so much today. Trying to extend this drive, though, on third down. Dylan won't get it done, though. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Will Williams in that bunch from Wake Forest forcing a fourth down. Yeah, and it's a little surprising how little offense Boston College has been able to generate because you saw that stat. They are doing so well in the first half. Well, they have 14 minutes and 37 seconds to make up that 212 yards. Fourth down, and they'll go for it. Brown rolling out. Decides to come the other way. As Burt wide open, completes it inside the 10, down to the 4. What a great play call on that by Mike Bajakian. Jake Burt just sneaks out the back end as a... Let's see if his knee is down. Looks like it, it is. Now, that'll be a first down regardless, even if they spot it there at the 9. But they may review this just to see where they're going to put the ball down. The Eagles lining up. They don't stop it. Dylan powers his way inside the five. Still on his feet, getting a push from his lineman. Mm. Finally, they'll call him down. Forward momentum stopped after a three-yard gain. He is earning every inch today. He sure is. And there's a little extracurricular at the end of that play, putting AJ Dillon on the ground. I'll tell you what. When you're a defensive lineman, you're going against an offensive line like this. You do not want to piss them off. <laughs> Some of those extra hits on your running back after the play will get those dudes fired up. Dylan again after a three-yard gain. He'll get it again. Up the middle. Just nothing doing. Pile of massive humanity in the middle. And he picks up really nothing. And this is big. Defense needs to step up and talk to defensive coordinator for Wake, and he talks, I want my guys to move and shake inside, use their quickness to their advantage. You see them just kind of slipping around offensive linemen to get in the backfield and clog up that running lane. Bailey now in for Dylan Brown, surprised by the snap. Pressure comes, and he tried to find Kobe White, incomplete. He's saying Basie on the coverage there, got his hand in the pocket of Kobe White, and, and this ball comes out well under pressure, and you watch that, that was just a drop. That's one Kobe White has to hold on to, and whew, Anthony Brown got hit. This is going to lead to a field goal attempt by Boston College. Aaron Bumeri on for a 22-yard attempt, transfer from Temple. Blumary puts it through, and the Eagles are on the board. So an 84-yard drive ends up in three. 10-3, Wake Forest on top early. Early second quarter, Wake Forest up 10-3 here at Alumni Stadium. Cotter Herzlick and Riggs. Boston College is getting on the board in that last drive. There's a look at Jamie Newman. We'll get another, another opportunity to see Newman in this really powerful Wake Forest offense coming up next. Christian Beal Smith back to return this kick. Danny Longman has the ball fall off the tee. He'll re tee it. 
A little bit of a breeze here today in Chestnut Hill. Falls off the tee again. Now we'll have to have somebody come in and hold it for Boston College. So look at Anthony Brown at BC on that long drive. That last time out, a little confidence for their offense. Joe Sparaccio, another starter on defense, playing special teams, will hold it. Now we're underway. Longman, long kick. That's going to go into the end zone out the back, and Wake Forest will start from their own 25. One of the curious things about this offense for Wake Forest, that mesh point. Very interesting to watch. Yeah, it is. It's a really kind of interesting thing, and watch what happens. They're reading this linebacker, seeing whether he gets up in the line of scrimmage or stays off, and Jamie Newman sees him creep up, so now his read goes to the corner on the outside. Since the corner's towards the line of scrimmage, it's a pull read for Jamie Newman. He pulls the ball out of the running back's hands. The running back becomes actually the lead blocker, and Jamie Newman gets in for the score. You're going to see that all day, that long mesh point by Wake Forest. First chance, time to see Christian Beal Smith to his right. Picks up maybe a yard on the carry. You'll see three running backs for Wake Forest today. Kate Carney, Christian Beal Smith, and Kenneth Walker, the third, the freshman. Here's a look at Beal Smith. Beal Smith is their shifty speed back. He's the one that can really home run speed. You can break the one deep. Bill Smith late. Now takes it. 40-yard line. Close to midfield. Dragging tacklers. 20 yards on the carry for Bill Smith. And watch this hole develop late. Right at the top of your screen, number 16 gets driven across the ball, and that's only allowed to have happened because of how long that next point was. Now Newman looking to throw. Pressure coming, and he's going to get dropped. Maximilian Richardson got there for his second sack of the season. And they come on the cross dog again. Watch the linebackers come. And as they come, they're creating a one-on-one -on -one with the running back, and Max Richardson just runs directly through Christian Beal Smith to the quarterback. Boston College has run a lot of that double linebacker pressure in order to mess up the reads for Jamie Newman. Boston College is showing pressure with the linebacker. And Lamont walked up. Newman, his own running back, scrambling, stiff arms, falls forward, picks up good six yards on the carry. Joe Sparaccio was there to make the stop, but it'll bring up a long third down now for Wake Forest. Going fast. Newman going deep, too. That's Surratt. Adjusting the football and just can't make the catch. Okay. Jason Matry was there. We're going to see a lot of Jason Matry now. He's starting to get some playing time, and he was impressive on that play. And he's been impressive the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he was. And, and that was an underthrown ball by Jamie Newman, but it was going to work out in the wide receiver's favor. He's the only one who sees it. That is a rare drop yeah. by the sure-handed Sa sure Sage Surratt, and Jamie can't believe it. That's why they went so fast, because they knew they had a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. That's one that they usually connect on. They need to get their big plays going. First time today, Wake Forest forced the punt. Dom Maggio will punt it away. Leave the win. He gets a really good punt. Driving lead all the way back to a six. Bobbles it for Corrales. And he gets leveled at the 15. Luke Masterson was there to bring him down. Hey, coming up next, week five of the college football season rolls along. NC State, Florida State at Doke. Our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. It's also available on the ESPN app. Critical games all across the board today in the ACC. I told you about teams like Pitt surviving. Got Virginia, Notre Dame, and a good one right now. North Carolina was up early on Clemson, 7 0 as well. At Keenan, so we'll keep an eye on that one. We've got a good one here. 10 3 Boston College. Now back at it. Baylor. Outside, 25, 30, stiff arm to the 40. Great run by Bailey. Watch the garden tackle pull around. And that block right there by Alex Lindstrom, the center. 
brings David Bailey free, and he does the rest with his speed, big body, speed on the outside. Now catching the ball out of the backfield, giving him 11 more. And first down, first down to first down. They start with the big run, and then they come back. For injury. Now Rondell Bothroyd, defensive tackle for Wake Forest, is down. Looks like he might have been holding his side. BC comes back on the very next first down, and they fake the outside run and roll back, and they get their running back the ball. That's what we call a roll two boot. Time out. Fake the running back one way, then throw it his way just as well. Austin, Austin Collins driving yeah, when we come back. Again. Got that Gatling gun launching T-shirts in the yeah. stand. And his Cantor is here too, lending a hand. It's a, oh, thro good throwing motion. Oh. There you go. He's gripping that like a baseball. I might throw a nice curveball. What do you think? With that long delivery on the top of the mound. Forget like about it. Johnson. Yeah, I was about that to say. The ball's going to be on top of you before it even leaves his hands. Make a bird explode with that T-shirt. You saw Rondell Bothroyd injured on the last plays being taken to the Wake Forest locker room. So we'll hopefully get an update on his condition here in a little bit. First down for Boston College now inside Wake territory. Here's AJ. Just bounces off a tackler. Keeps his feet close to another first down. Yeah, and we've talked to Lyle Hemphill, the defensive coordinator for Wake Forest, and he talked about during fall training camp, every fourth day they would practice against 12 personnel to prepare for Boston College. He said it's as different as be baseball is to basketball playing against a team like Boston College. They need that extra practice in order to be able to defend it. And we saw early in the game it played out pretty well, but right now Boston College is running. Ball start, offense, number 80, five-yard penalty. First down. You saw Steve Adazio with head and hands. He talked so much with us this week about staying on target as far as first down. Don't mm -hmm. get behind the chains. Now they're first and 15. It's going to be that much more difficult. Take the deal. Tight end has it. That's long, close to a first down. Ryan Smenda brings him down, but it's 14 yards. So they get the penalty yardage and that much more back. College quick to the line of scrimmage. Brown just keeps it. That surge of that offensive line gives him the first. Last week, Boston College was down near the goal line. It was third and one at the four. And they ran a QB sneak to get one yard. They almost got all the way into the end zone. This offensive line has such good push up front. Good way to pick up three. Take the game. In the corner, that's Flowers for the score. But it smiles on that boy's face, Anthony Brown with a dime to Zay Flowers, and that's such great self-scouting by Boston College. Last week, they lined up in the exact same formation and just ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball. Well, now they came out. Huge play down the field to Zay Flowers. Pumeri hits the PAT in Boston College. Knots things up here in Chestnut Hill. In Boston College, down the field, freshman Zay Flowers with the score. Wake Forest gets it back when we come back. Anthony Brown with a seventh touchdown pass of the season. Boston College and Wake Forest all nodded at 10 apiece about the midway point of the second quarter. Wake Forest was up 10 zip. BC now they've scored 10 on 10 unanswered. We got ourselves a game here in Chestnut Hill. Sure do. Long and low line drive kick. That's going to bounce out of the back of the end zone. Wake at the 25. BC here, explosive plays. Yeah, we got one here. Yeah, watch this safety right here. He creeps down, and that's the A.J. Dillon effect. And watch these tight ends. Tight one tight end breaks out, and then you get Zay Flowers working this empty space of the field that was occupied originally by that safety. But he's down in the run game because A.J. Dillon's so dangerous, leaves a wide open spot for Zay Flowers down the field. And that all goes back to that self-scouting. Know what the defense is going to do because you showed a tendency and break that tendency for a big play. Now let's see how Wake Forest answers. They get to Carney. BC is there defensively. Carney falls forward. Maybe just gets back to the line of scrimmage. John Lamont and company there to put him down. 
John Lamont's having a big game so far. He's the middle point of that defense, and a lot of what Wake Forest does attacks that middle linebacker position. He's stepped up so far. Really incomplete. Brandon Sebastian defending on the play. And Lamont is, Lamont's actually related to Jamie Newman. They're cousins. They grew up together. Both from the same town, Graham, North Carolina, and they are playing both very good football today. Third down for the Deeks. Going up top to Claude, who makes an adjustment on the football, but can't come down with it. Sebastian again on the coverage. That's twice in a row. The sophomore from West Haven, Connecticut, made the stop. Brandon Sebastian is an awesome story. He's a great player, and, and he's the lone returning defensive back starter on this Boston College team, and he's going to be matched up all day with that boundary receiver. Does a good job of not having contact until the ball gets there. Two back-to-back -back big plays to get Boston College defense off the field. Dom Maggio back in the punt for Wake Forest. Gets off another good punt. Drives Levy back to his 26. Up the middle, still on his feet. Good return, gets it out to the 34-yard line after a 58-yard line drive punt off the toe of Dom Maggio. We'll see BC again offensively. Yeah, and Levy's, Travis Levy's a really cool story, too. He actually came to Boston College as a linebacker in a pinstripe bowl a few years ago. He had nine tackles at linebacker, then decided to switch over to running back, and he's been a running back, a wide receiver, a kick returner. Right now he's playing kick returner filling in for Michael Walker who left last year who led the nation in total return yards so big shoes to fill he's done a really good job at that return position speaking of really good job Boston College has done a better job here in the second quarter Bailey tries to shake off the tackler cannot Suleiman Kamara with a nice job of bringing him down Winding inside of eight minutes left to go here in the second quarter. First quarter dominated by Wake Forest. Second quarter by BC. Those flowers. Check that. Kobe White on the receiving end of that pass from Anthony Brown. I feel like he's gotten a lot more confidence now, Brown. Yeah, he has. And, and that's not an easy throw to make. He's rolling out to his left, which is a difficult throw for a quarterback to make. A little bit late on the throw. Got it there for a nice catch. Third and two now for BC. Bailey. Can't shake the tacklers. Wake Forest is all in the backfield that time. Tyler Williams dropping Bailey on third down, and now Boston College looks like they'll be forced to punt. Yeah, Tyler Williams does a great job of getting through a double team. 72 right there splits the double team and works to the running back. And that's what we talked about. Every fourth day of practice during camp, they went against these two tight end, two running back sets to prepare them. Some of you bank. You bank knowledge as you go through the season. Tyler Williams had good recall of what he learned getting ready for this offense. Sage Surratt back to return his punt. Carlson end over end. Surratt will pick it up at his 18. Fair catch, and that's where Wake Forest will take over. Interestingly enough, you know, this Wake Forest team with Jamie Newman's had so much success here in these last eight games as Kelsey talked about at the open going against his cousin on the other side John Lamont a name you've mentioned now quite a bit in this game at that middle linebacker spot yeah I think it's really cool anytime family members get to play on the same team or against each other I think it's really cool and you saw Surratt or you saw Surratt play a few weeks ago against his brother who's on UNC and now you get to see a couple cousins going against each other and and it's funny a lot of Newman's reads are going to be on a guy he knows so well in <laughs> John great. Lamont Kenneth Walker, the freshman, now at that tailback spot for Wake Forest. Newman just nowhere to go. T.J. Ram bringing him down. No gain on the play, maybe even a loss. And here they are growing up playing basketball. Here's Jamie Newman on the left, John Lamott on the right. And we asked Max Richardson who the best basketball player was on this Boston College team. And no hesitation at all. He said, by far, it's John Lamott. Yeah, John Lamott is... Uh... They both are great basketball players, grew up playing together, and right now, what they do together more than anything is play video games. They play basketball virtually, 
2K is their game, and I'll tell you what, I talked to Jamie Newman. He wanted to make sure that I let everyone know that he is up 3-1 to one against his cousin John Lamont in their series in NBA 2K on Xbox. <laughs> And that's where they get their trash talking and bragging rights. Kendall Hinton on the catch on that last play for Wake Forest, but just not quite enough for a first down. It'll bring up a third down in less than a yard. A big Kate Carney back in the backfield to get that power yard. Newman's going to keep it. Gets the first down and a lot more. Breaks free from that first line. 40, 30. Eagles giving chase, and Newman finally steps out of bounds after a huge gain. That's 50 yards on the carry. Uh-oh. Jamie Newman found a crease, and he took advantage of that. Boston College was all geared up to stop him for one yard. Not only did he get one, he got a 49 extra. And they move quickly. Carney, he'll take the handoff. Squirts through, give him about three. Let's take a look again at that run. Watch him find this gap. And boom, he sees, he, okay, now it's time to get in a foot race. He's not going to outrun Brennan Sebastian, but he can get to the outside. Carney to the outside. Good pursuit by Boston College, drops him for no gain. Now Lamont, inside out pressure, and Boston College did a good job of setting an edge. John Lamont shows some of his speed. He's a bigger back, 240 pounds at that linebacker position, but that, he can run. Third and seven for the Deeks. Blitz picked up. Newman on the outside. Complete for a first down. Kendall Hinton again. That's a great pass by Jamie Newman. Thrown all the way to the opposite side of the field. Alongside an out route. That's the longest throw he can make. Great accuracy. First and goal for Wake Forest. Trying to answer BC. The long mesh point. Finally, Carney gets it. Just rolls forward, giving three yards. It's really interesting. It almost seems like they run back so fast the line of scrimmage, and they take their they take their breath <laughs> once the ball is snapped. They almost catch their breath and in, in that mesh point, and then burst forward again. Splitting Carney out, bottom of your screen. Newman looks for an open. He can't find much. Can't find anything. Maximilian Richardson there to make the stop. Another third down for Wake Forest. And that was coaching. That last play by Boston College's defense, Marcus Valdez saw a blocker coming around to kick him out, and he just sliced underneath it, creating havoc in the backfield. Hard to stop the half. Newman looks Surratt's way. Battling for it in the end zone. Surratt with a one-handed catch. Wow flag on the play as he was battling with Brandon Sebastian and it looks like Surratt just won that one on one matchup 50 50 ball goes his way Pass interference. defense number 10 that penalty is declined result of the play touchdown wow, he just bullied him on this play and Brandon Sebastian just trying to hang on for dear life but when you can just use one hand and make a contested catch look at that he's Sebastian's got a hand in there, almost hitting the ball, and Sage Siraj just, eh, I he was only one. Wards him off with the right and catches it with the left. He's a basketball player. It looks like he was just boxing him out, catching a low post. Pass for it. Skiba with the point after. Newman continues this magical combination with his receivers. It's been Washington for much of the day. On this play, it was Sage Surratt with his score. Wake back on top. Close game against the Delaware Fighting Blue Hens. And then Anthony Brown, an analysis on this quarterback here for Boston College. We'll get that all coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report in just a bit. Wake Forest back on top. They're going three for three on third down in that last drive. Here's Levy from the set. Gets free. To midfield. Bangs into some tacklers and gets into Wake Forest territory. 50 yards on the return. Boston College is in business. Speaking of in business, Dallin Cuff's in business in the studio. What's going on, Dallin? 
Thanks, Connor. We got a Fansville studio update for you. North Carolina up 14 to 7 on number one ranked Clemson after this. Sam Hell, little cross body to Bo Corrales. After the Travis Etienne fumble, they capitalize. Heels up 14 7 now, late second quarter. Back to you, Connor. That is a big deal. Thanks, Dal. And appreciate that. 14 7. More on that coming up on the State Farm halftime report. Some big goings on with Matt Brown at North Carolina right now. Boston College in fantastic shape to get right back on the board after that big return. Here's Flowers on the jet sweep. It's by the initial pressure from that defense, but way too many white shirts there forcing him out of bounds. Noticing a little tendency on Boston College offense. That time and the time before when Zay Flowers got the sweep, A.J. Dillon was offset, not behind the quarterback. To see if that continues as this game progresses. Loss of two on first down. Flowers in motion again to fake to Dillon. Pressure coming. Brown runs into his own man. Can't escape. Now he does. Eyes downfield. Connects with lines. What a play. What <laughs> a play by Anthony Brown. You watch A.J. Dillon as this play goes. He's, he's blocking. They just keeps on he almost tackles his own quarterback and just puts a hip in there really good vision downfield and good work by Benny Blinds working back to his quarterback for the reception now dealing with the carry he sure he prefers that more than blocking but it didn't work out for him very well in that play a minus two on the run Justin Cernat first time we've called his name today for Wake Forest yeah and Justin Cernat leads ACC in 10 tackles per game He's an unbelievable player. He uses such good speed and quickness to diagnose a play and get to the ball. A tackle. He's going for a loss there. Again, second and 12. The fake to Dillon this time. Pressure coming for Brown. Escapes initially. Picks up two. Third down and long for Boston College is not where they want to be. They've been very good in terms of third down conversion percentages this year. They're number one in the ACC. And third down conversions. This is not what they want, though. They don't. They want third and short, and third and long. This may be four down territory for them as well, with the clock winding down. Long, still on his feet. The 26 yard line. He'll come up just shy of the first down. But I got to think this is definitely a go territory here for a Yeah, I think so. Especially they have a little bit of an injury to their kicker. Look for that quarterback sneak again. That's what they run. And they'll pick up the first down. I think it's really interesting when you look at the play calling by Mike Bajake. And I think that, you know, he goes in reverse order. If he knows he's going to go for it on fourth and short, calls that little tight end out. screen. Boston College, their first. Come out of the half. To get just enough to set seconds. up that quarterback sneak. Don't miss the huddle, our signature football show. It's hosted by Jack Collinsworth, with analyst Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Mark Rick. They'll preview the weekend slate of games, keep you up to date on all things ACC football. That's live next Friday night at 8 Eastern and Saturday at a special time of 3 o'clock Eastern right here on the ACC Network and on that ESPN app. BC calling time out there. A minute and one left in this first half. As they look to continue this drive, fresh set of downs. BC really settled down after those first couple series and got it back in the hands of their big running backs. A.J. Dillon, David Bailey did on the ground through the air a little bit, and then Zay Flowers on that long touchdown pass, and then they found some success getting him on the outside on the sweep game. They're utilizing their players and their, and their player skill sets really well in the later part of this half. David Bailey spelling A.J. Dillon. Big to him, Brown. All kinds of time. Inside the five. Kobe White on the receiving end. Boston College in business first and goal. They're hurrying up. To get to Bailey. Powers his way into that line of scrimmage. Gets a yard. Tyler Williams has just been clogging that thing up all night long. Let's take a look at that pass from Anthony Brown to Kobe White. 
really cleared out the safety with a tight end coming underneath. You see Karabadrizi underneath pulls the safety and just throws it right to that open window. Because the helmet came off by the offense, number 77. This qualified for a 10 second runoff. Boston College has elected to use a timeout to avoid the 10 second runoff. 30 second timeout. Second timeout of this first half by Boston College. Steve Adazio and I don't think Mike he's Pacheco allowed. To, yep, and he's not. I don't know if he can re enter the game. Uh, he needs to sit out for a play regardless. I think you can of, after a timeout. Okay. If, if you use the timeout instead of the runoff, I think you can come back into the game. Stand corrected. But yeah, at this point in the game, time is more important than your timeouts. And you want to be able to get the ball in the end zone here. You would love to go into halftime tied rather than settle for a field goal, especially since you did such a great job marching down the field. And a great catch by Kobe White. Anthony Brown started the day with an interception his first of the year since then as you've just mentioned he's really settled down. Yeah he has settled down he's found his rhythm he's rolling out to his left see that's a difficult pass to make regardless has that interception early and now finds finds his open net he's been taking what the defense has given him well later part of this half. Brown now rolling he's like he's gonna get a shovel pass for the score. Bailey on the receiving end. It looked like Brown could have run it himself. He decided to get it to Bailey in Boston College with six more. A little flip out in front of him. And they're running a lot of this roll to boot, meaning they're faking the run to the, to the right, and then they're booting to the right, and it really puts that edge defender in a bind. Am I going to play the run or cover the running back? Expose that one right there for the touchdown. Mary with the PAT. We are once again tied at 17 apiece. In his roll to boot. Watch the running back come here and then leak out to the flat. And the fake goes in the same direction. And it really puts the edge defenders in the bind. They're playing up for the run, but once the running back has that wide release path, that becomes a pass and taken advantage of by Anthony Brown and David Bailey. It's a great drive for Anthony Brown, and that's what they need to do going into the half. A few weeks ago against Kansas, going into the half, they gave up a huge run for a big 80-something yard run followed by a touchdown. And they felt deflated going into halftime and never was able to recover in that game. This is going to give them a spark leading into the half as long as they hold Wake with 41 seconds left. Yeah, we, we, two weeks ago we were here in that Kansas game and they couldn't hold Kansas with even less time left on the clock. So you know this Boston College defense isn't going to take anything for granted. Neil Smith will once again let this one sail out of the back of the end zone. And Wake Forest will take over from their 25 with 41 seconds to play here in the first half. We've seen the success from both teams come from what they are both really good at. You've seen Jamie Newman do it through the air. His big receiver, Sage Surratt, Scotty Washington, and Boston College doing it mostly on the ground. But that man right there is going to do a little bit extra. When he is able to get going through the air, that's when Boston College's offense is really dangerous. on the handoff bangs his way for three and it looks like Wake Forest is content to go into the half and discuss things with a tie ball game here in Chestnut Hill I know Boston College defense is holding their breath right now because in that first play of this drive you saw Wake Forest come out in a 10 personnel meaning they're spread out everybody wide and that's exactly what Kansas did first them at the second half of the game and they're saying, don't do that again. <laughs> don't do that. Let's see if they figure out how to stop it. There are the two cousins right there slapping hands as they're getting ready to go in for halftime. Boston College with 17 points in that second quarter after Wake jumped out to it. The teams that are having a little bit of a budding rivalry in the ACC. BC certainly not a, haven't, haven't been in the league as long as Wake Forest, but they've played each other so tightly here over the past few years. This is one of those 
start to say rivalry is on. Second half kickoff. Goes out of bounds before it can get to the end zone. So a good break for Wake Forest. Tough way to start for Boston College. Kelsey Riggs is down in the field. Kels, what do you got? Well, guys, I just caught up with Dave Clawson on his way back out, okay. and I asked him about his offense. Jamie Newman just 89 yards in the air in the first half. This is an offense that's normally averaging over 300 passing yards each game. He told me it was pretty simple. He says his wide receivers need to catch balls. They need to go out there and make some plays. So a simple diagnosis from him. We'll see if they're able to do this in the second half. All right, thanks, Kels. Appreciate that. Mark Herslick here in the booth with me, Chris Cotter, second half. Underway with Wake Forest. Looking to mount another drive. Here, a little quick option to Kate Carney. Great pursuit by Max Maximilian Richardson to bring him down. No gain on the play. Yeah, and Max read that play really well. Just kind of flew out to the flat. Inside out pressure. Great tackle. Boston College is showing pressure. Newman looks to the sideline to see if they're going to change the play at all. DC backs off. Newman can hit Surratt. Surratt with just one catch in that first half. It was a big one and a nice catch in the end zone here. A one-handed touchdown grab, but he's been quiet. Yeah, he has been quiet. And Boston College is mixing up their front, their line of scrimmage, to try to get some pressure on Jamie Newman. So he can't set his feet and be, have in-rhythm throws. You saw there, it throws a little high over the head of his big save Surratt wide receiver. Third and long for Newman. DC comes with the pressure, Newman flushed out. He's going to try and gain it with his legs, and he isn't going to get there. Driven out of bounds. Seven yards on the pickup. He'll be short, and they'll have to punt. You saw Mike Palmer coming off the That's edge. For injury. Fourth down. There's Mike Palmer right there, a little shaken up on the play. He'll get to his feet and be helped off. Mike Palmer was the one in the backfield trying to chase down Jamie Newman. And he comes off the edge of the defense. You see him at the bottom of your screen coming. Makes a really good move on running back Cade Carney and was just trying to smack the ball out of Jamie Newman's hands. And that would have been a great forced fumble sack, but was able, unable to get there. T.J. Rayham ran down. Speedy Jamie Newman. That's a non-contact injury for Palmer. Obviously a concern for that B.C. staff starting safety. Maggio in the kick. Now the wind is back on this kick, and it shows. Out of bounds. Let's see where the officials mark it. 18-yard line. 40-yard kick. Nothing on the return. Boston College will take over their first offensive possession from their own 18. Yeah, I'm sure both teams went into half really excited about where they were. And while they were in for halftime, Chris, you and I were up in the booth, and we had a little food. Chris, I put it on my Instagram, but my meal consisted of a salad with nice leafy greens. And Chris, what did you have? I had some Oreos. Oreos. And the you most had a massive salad. Yeah, but the most disappointing part about your Oreos is they were single stuff, not double stuff. No, I don't like all the double stuff. Boston College is going to like this, though. That's A.J. Dillon. It just knocks his defender out of the way. 18 yards on his first carry in the first half. As much as Surratt was battled up for Wake Forest, Dylan was too. He had the 133-yard run in that first half. Other than that, 22 yards for him. He's offset. Look for the sweep by Zay Flowers. Good call. Flowers has it. Uses a block from Dylan to spring himself. 40. Spins his way to the 41. And you, you're absolutely right. AJ Dylan uh, was had bottled up a little bit except for that big run. That tendency showed itself again. Zay Flowers on that sweep. They do that in a hurry-up situation. They were able to pick up five yards. Now the fake to Dillon. Brown wide open on the outside. That's Glines. That's actually Garrison, the tight end, on the outside. 15 yards on the pitch and catch. And you know, it was no wonder you thought that was a wide receiver because you have a big a <laughs> pass going all the way to the sideline. You don't normally see tight ends out there. Dylan, wide open now. Gets a block from his receiver on the outside. Picks up that first down. Now he's getting some space. 17 yards on that carry. And BC's pulling some guards and using some tight ends as lead blockers and switching up their front offensively. Puts Wake Forest in a bind. And right at the end of the play, 
you watch watch when AJ Dillon runs he invites contact he wants that player to run into him so hopefully he can bounce off and get an extra yard Dillon will catch a break Bailey there's White on the end around couldn't quite get the corner Travion Red was shaking up in the first half with a nice tackle let's go back to you not liking double stuffed Oreos that blows my mind I actually like the thin ones better okay because I like the cookie better all right there's a lot of people out there that'll agree with me I don't think that would have a whole salad at halftime. Brown with the pressure does get it off, but another dangerous pass. And there was Amari Henderson again looking for interception number two. It goes incomplete. And this right here, we see that roll two boot again that we highlighted in the first quarter. And what Wake did, they said, okay, we're going to bring pressure to the side of the run fake. And that pressure just continued to the quarterback and forced Anthony Brown to get the ball out quick. That's the one downside of that roll two boot. Third and seven. Empty backfield for BC. Almost it was a false start again. Yeah. It'll be third and 12. False start. Offense. Number 64. Five yard penalty. Third down. The veteran Ben Petrula making his 29th straight start tonight. That's the third false start infraction so far today by Boston College. Just pushes them back and third and long here. He gets the ball distributed outside the numbers. Brown designed draw. Breaks free from one tackle and gets close to the stick. All right, again, you see the play calling. Let's see if they go for it on fourth down here again. That's what that quarterback draw leads me to believe that they were just trying to get enough to make it fourth and manageable. Looks like that's what they're going to do. Bailey stays on the field, flanking Brown. We got Levy in motion. Brown, oh, picked off. Isang Bassi, the veteran cornerback, just read that route perfectly and jumped right in front of Kobe White for the pick. Isang Bassi had that play sniffed out from the very beginning. And his break right here, his eyes are on the quarterback the entire time, breaks down at the proper angle to get that catch. Probably would have been more beneficial in terms of yard-wise to knock it down, but that's a pick in Isang Bassi's stat sheet. Now Wake Forest gets the ball on another turnover. That's two interceptions thrown by Brown today. First INT of the year for Bassey, and Wake gets it right back. So a promising drive for Boston College here. Their first of the second half goes by the wayside with nothing to show for it. Newman, pressure coming. They'll drop him. He's set. That's great pressure off the edge by Richard Jurgen. Transferring in from Clemson after missing two years of football. He came in off the edge. Great pressure for that sack. Now Wake Forest is behind the sticks and they have to change up a little bit of what they do in terms of their tempo on offense. Newman underneath to his tight end. That's Green Fall. Breaks a tackle. Picks up a first down. Kelsey's got an injury update for us on Mike Palmer. Well, the good news is he's back in the game, and he just made that play right there during that whole defensive uh, drive for them. He was getting worked on down here. It looks like his right ankle may have gotten retaped, but as you can see there, it looks like he's feeling okay. Thanks, Kels. It's good news for Boston College getting him back in the game. Newman has a lot of room to run. Closed down. Ram making the tackle. Newman picks up about three. Yeah, TJ Ram read that play. and Look at his helmet. Oh, he, <laughs> that boy can hit people. And a lot of times you get stuck on a block. He was able to shed the block, get off, and make the tackle. That same exact play hurt them versus Kansas. Good to see an improvement for BC's D-line. Bill Smith bounces it. Now puts his foot in the ground. Scoots his way for three. BC's defensive line is impressing me right now. They're able to get pressure and knock Wake Forest's offensive line back. It's providing messy running lanes for Wake Forest. Third and four. Pressure coming up the middle. Newman has time, though. Now bounces outside. Keeps his head downfield. He's going to try and run for it. And he picks up the first down and a lot more. Give him 10 yards on the carry. And watch Boston College's legs. They're dead. 
watch John Lamont. He kind of stops on this rush. And then you're trying to see Max Richardson, number 14, get to the ball, and his legs almost just stop on him. He gets some fresh legs in there. Long mesh point before Beal Smith carries it. Two yards. That's not a good sign if their legs are dead right now. We're at the 9-16 point in this third quarter. No, absolutely not. And that's one of the things that happens when you get so many plays run against you. The defensive side. Design quarterback run for Newman. Gets outside, close to the first down. I think he's going to be about two feet short. So interesting to see that progression. Quarterback draws usually are quick up the middle. And they spread a defense out by getting them to cover wide receivers there. They actually pulled the tackle out and round to lead Newman through the hole, which only happens because of how slow he was on that draw. Mark, you're talking about this Boston College defense, and that's one of the things that Steve Adazio touched on. He said that they had a great week of practice, but that he was worried had they done too much, didn't want them to get tired. And right now you're saying we might see a little bit of that fatigue. Yeah, that's a good point, Kels. Had a lot to work on after the Kansas game a couple of weeks ago. Got better last week against Rutgers, but you got to walk that line if you're a head coach, right? How hard do you work the players? Even if, as he said, his players love it. They're football junkies, and how much do you give them a little bit of a break so they're fresh when you get into the second half of a game? Yeah, they are football junkies, and you see their helmets all dinged up. They love to hit, and they're doing a lot in practice. Let's see how their legs hold up throughout the game. And a fresh set of downs now for Lake Forest. He wanted the shovel pass to Bill Smith. Just wasn't open, so he... The better part of Valor was just to go down and live to fight another down. Sometimes what looks like a broken play on Wake Forest's offense is actually play design. Boston College has covered it all up. Loss of a yard on the play. Newman rush coming. Tried to get to Washington. He was brought down by De Palma before he could even get anything on the pass. And right there, Boston College is brings pressure again you watch you see five guys down the line of scrimmage this linebacker is unaccounted for as this guy drops back the numbers change for the offensive line and it leaves a wide open lane for De Palma to get in the backfield and bring up a huge third down and long for Wake Forest now Newman looks to the sideline as the Wake Forest coaching staff changes the play third and 11 Newman has time. Newton fall with the first down. Boston College is sitting back in a two deep in the middle. Reed player, the middle linebacker clears out. And you see 36 just lag off his tight end a little bit. And that provides that open window in the middle for Wake Forest to attack. Quick on the outside. Hidden gets a block. Five yards on the reception. John Lamont downfield to make the stop. Wake Forest has converted on all three of their third downs on this drive to keep the chains moving. John Lamont is all over the field. He had 10 tackles in the first half. He's just continuing to find his way to the ball. Will Smith, a fake to him, and Newman kept it. Was good to get two yards on that play. He's smiling about it. <laughs> Again, they got man-to-man -man coverage. The backers are in and out on the running back. And when they see that running back come up in the middle, they shoot their gap. That's exactly what you need to do from the linebacker position and force Jamie Newman's hand on the read. 14th play of this drive, third and four. Hinton makes the catch and picks up the first down. So many weapons getting Hinton back from that hamstring injury. This is the first time he's played in a couple of games. The fake to Hinton. Looking for Washington. Has him at the 10. Oh, Washington just lost his footing. But a pickup of nine yards on the, on the catch. Seems like when Boston College sits back in their zone on defense, Jamie Newman's able to find the hole. But when they bring pressure up the middle and rely man-to-man -man on the outside, they've been successful. Get the Beal Smith. DJ Ram is there after four yards on the pickup. And we've got a Boston College player down. Official timeout.
for injury. That was seven remaining here in this third quarter, 17 apiece. That's where we were at the half. Wake Forest and Boston College. BC went on a lengthy drive, picked, thrown by Anthony Brown. And since then, Jamie Newman has taken this Wake Forest team 16 plays and 75 yards, almost six minutes off the clock, and they aren't done yet. First and goal from the seven yard line. Cade Carney, the big power back, back in for the Deacons. Good play here. Don't see a flag, but it goes to the end zone for Washington. And he tried the one handed catch. Jason Matry was there, and no flag came out. Yeah. It looked to me like they were going to have an offside in the defense, but Jason Matry is a guy who's really stepped up at that corner position and does a good job of getting his body in between the ball and Scotty Washington. Newman keeps it. Tries to go inside, can't. Gets outside and gets what he can, which is actually a pretty good run at two yards. Well, this brings up a third down, and Wake Forest, if there's one area that they've struggled with, it's been red zone conversions. And you see time and time again them getting down there and having issues. Newman, the fake. Tries to go over the middle. Now does. Incomplete. Scotty Washington was the intended receiver, but Matry is there. And this freshman from Orlando is playing really well on one of the top receivers in the conference. And this is an absolutely huge play by Matry. He's able to get in the hip pocket of his wide receiver who's coming all the way from the outside in and that's the lane that opens up as the other receivers have cleared out that's basically a one-on-one -on -one with your wide receiver and a cornerback and jason matry won that and ended that long long drive with a field goal attempt for wake forest next keeper will attempt that field goal 22 yards to give the demon deacons that lead back once again skiba nails it and Wake retakes the lead, 20 to 17. A long drive, third time in the last four years. Last couple of times it happened, maybe didn't finish the way they had hoped it would. This season they're hoping for a, a little bit of a change as far as the remaining schedule. And if they win today on the road, get their first ACC win, look at the way the schedule shapes up for them. The next three at home after a bye week next week. Yeah, and they get to recover on that bye week and then you come out and you have three at home, and that's big. And you could potentially go in 9-0 and to Clemson, and what a game that would be. You know Rick Wake would be high up in the rankings at 9-0 and as well. It's putting the cart way before the horse on that, but I like the way you're thinking Isn't on that. that. And fun if, you're, to do sometimes? if you're a Wake Forest fan, you're thinking, man, what could be going into that Clemson game? First things first, though, they're in a battle here in Chestnut Hill against Boston College, as we all expected. Probably the ball is... Levy at the end in the end zone and he finally takes an EBC will take over on the 25. Guys, we talked to Dave Clawson a lot about that start and the potential to be 5-0. and This was a game that they said they definitely weren't looking past, and they weren't listening to all the hype surrounding this 4-0 and start either. He told us that the best thing that his guys can do is just focus on themselves. That's what they've done the first four games this season to get them to 4-0, and and that's what they were doing heading into the Boston College game as well. Yeah, and he, he's, ha he's excited about where his team is at. When he first got there, they had a really good defense. In the past couple of years, they've had really good offense. And he thinks this is the kind of shortest distance gap between the two offense and defense and talent level that they have. Look at Dylan just finding the hole. Oh, he's brought down ankle tackle by Nasir Greer. Otherwise, that might have been a huge play. Five it yards for Dylan, but Greer, the defensive coordinator Lyle Hempel said he's got to bring the carrier down, the ball carrier down. He did on that play. Dylan again, this time to his left. As a blocker, just sniffs out that first down yard marker and he finds it. So he was following his big Alec Lindstrom. And what I love about Alec Lindstrom on that play is he passes up people that are non-threats. He knows his running backs fast enough. He doesn't need to block 45. He doesn't need to block 23. He continues on the outside and blocks the most dangerous threat who has a legitimate shot attacking A.J. Dillon. Great job by Alec Lindstrom. Now the play kick. Brown. Nice catch by Kobe White. Looks like he caught it clean and see if that back foot got down. Yep, looks like he gets that down. You see the turf, the little pellets pop off the ground. Big catch, Kobe White. Ten yards. Now Brown keeps it. Picks up three on first down. 
seen so many times it's almost you know until the running backs are past the line of scrimmage that they first get contacted in in Boston College backs average 2.3 yards per rush before their first contact that's a testament to their offensive line getting that extensive push off the ball nice job by Luke Masterson he and Bailey just met and it was like a like a WWF test of strength between those two <laughs> and Masterson holding his ground oh man he held his ground but there's no knockback there Third and six, BC wants to move quickly. Brown up to the line of scrimmage. Lake showing pressure. Actually signaling for a hook on the outside. Brings White in motion. Looking that way, finds this, uh, tried to get it to Bailey, is running back, but just a little out of his reach. Brown's upset with himself. And Zay Flowers ran that hook right over the ball. Looked like Save Flowers coming in the screen right there, but he went outside and just a poor throw. David Bailey outside, which would have resulted in a first down because he had wide open space to the sideline. And those two talking about it right now on the sideline, but failing to convert on third down means Carlson will come in to give it a boot. Sage Surratt had to return this punt, but it was off the side of his foot. Not a great punt by Carlson at all. And the official coming up field to mark it. Matchup presented by Geico. It's also available on the ESPN app. A lot of good football going on right now, too. Virginia's just taking the lead over Notre Dame. You got Clemson and North Carolina still tied there in the third quarter. And we've got a barn burner here. Flag on the play before Wake can even get started. Ball start. Offense, number 59. Spot penalty. First down. That's a rare penalty for Wake Forest. They're the least penalized team in the ACC in the seventh least penalized in all of FBS with 13. That was a rare pre-snap penalty for them. First penalty of the game against Wake Forest. You see the hard count. CBC defensive line jumping. Wake Forest diagnoses the defense and gets the right play call in. Newman takes the walker. Over the middle, hits the tight end. That's Brandon Chapman, gang tackled after a gain of nine. Well, Boston College is just continually playing cover two, and they're clearing out the middle of that field. And when Wake Forest sees cover two, they send someone right in the middle gap. That's vacated by Boston College. Walker to his right. Makes a move short of the first down to gain. Many out track with the tackle after a four-yard run. A big third down here for Wake Forest if they want to keep this drive going. And look for them to get the line of scrimmage pretty quickly. Third and short. Pressure comes. They pick it up. Surratt shakes one tackler and second one, but finally loses his footing right near midfield. That's a first down for Wake Forest. Great job by Sage Surratt coming back to the football and getting friendly to the quarterback. Boston College has struggled with missed tackles this season. Showed up again there for the catch and run. Newman keeping it. <laughs> Cousins going at each other right there. John Lamont, look at him talking right there. Uh, John Lamont, another big tackle. Read it perfectly, came off the edge. And Jamie Newman, John Lamont know each other really well. <laughs> Their blood. You can tell by the smiles on both of their faces on a number of times tonight. They're having fun playing against each other. Yeah, they are, and they're both playing really well. Newman has 88 yards running on the day. Walker patiently waited for his hole to open up. Marcus Valdez closed it down after a four-yard gain. So they said that they don't talk a lot of trash on the field. <laughs> look <at that. laughs> but look at them there. We're not talking trash, but... They saved their trash for video games. I love it. Now third down for Wake Forest. Surratt makes the catch. And this was after Newman was hit right as he released the ball. Marcus Valdez got in the backfield there. And Marcus Valdez is a guy who came in here. He's a redshirt sophomore. A lot was put on his shoulders to replace defensive end. Went to the NFL. Zach Allen. He's played really well this game, getting pressure in the backfield, taking on blocks really well. Blake has been outstanding converting third downs in this game. Convert another one, press set here. 
Newman over the top. Picked off. Mike Palmer was shaken up just moments ago back in the game playing center field and picks off Jamie Newman. You'll see him come out in the top of your screen, but Jamie Newman sees a one-on-one. -on -one. His running back versus a linebacker just doesn't see Mike Palmer over top. He saw a matchup that he wanted. Mike DePalma does a good job of getting in, in Walker's hip pocket and making the ball go up top. It's an interception. The previous play was under review. While Bob Welch, our replay official, reviews the play, Jamie Newman on the phone, presumably with his offensive coordinator, Warren Ruggiero, talking about what he saw in that play. And he obviously didn't see Mike Palmer, who made the interception. We've seen both of these quarterbacks now uncharacter uncharacteristically throwing interceptions. Yeah, and look at the ability of Mike Palmer to go up there and catch the ball with his hands. It bobbles, but I think he keeps it trapped in between his legs and his hands. It never touches the ground. So although you see that ball movement, it never hits the ground, and that's going to be a completed interception from Mike Palmer. That's the question is, I think, not whether he whether it hits the ground here while he's rolling, but whether that initial contact with the ground forces the bobble. Yeah, I think we can take a look at it here and see. So right there, I think the initial contact with the ground forces it. However, it's the elbow that hits the ground, and the ball pops up and see what the replay officials have to say but in my opinion the ball never comes close to contact in the ground yeah. it's almost it bounces off Mike Palmer himself call on the field was an interception so there has to be indisputable evidence here that the ball hit the ground there as opposed to his elbow hitting the ground and forcing the ball to move does not hit there so that's what Bob Welch the replay official is looking at right now And what a timely interception for Boston College. They've, they've given up two interceptions and they needed one on their end. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Boston College. Big turnover created by this BC defense, something they've done so well this year. While they've had their issues, forcing turnovers hasn't been one of them. No, and, and they've been, since 2017, Boston College has been top three in the nation in interceptions that they've gained. See right there, they're they're tied with Iowa right now with that that last pick right there. Dylan. Stiff arm. Tough to bring down. Justin Sternod with the tackle, but not before Dylan gets seven yards. That's the end of the third quarter. Wouldn't have it any other way. These two battling it out right to the very end. We go to the fourth quarter. Wake Forest up three at Boston College. Chris Cotter, Mark Herzlick, Kelsey Riggs back at Alumni Stadium. Buckle up, everybody. We got the fourth quarter underway here. And Jamie Newman's, he's been this offense for Wake Forest, as you would expect. But the passing numbers aren't there. He's their leading rusher. And A.J. Dillon has just gone over 100 yards and more. Into the second level to the 34 before Sternod is there to bring him down 16 more yards for A.J. And right here, watch 45. The inside linebacker gets caught up on the left tackle, Vrabel. A.J. Dillon goes right off his butt for a big play. Now he's wide open in the flat for a big run and catch. Wide open. Can he get blocks downfield? All the way to the 32. 33 yards on the pitch and catch. Boogie Basham had to track him down from behind. Now Dillon will get a breather and Bailey comes in. B.C. wants to continue to go quickly. Flowers on the sweep. Bailey with a big block. Masterson was there to bring down Flowers after only a three-yard gain. Looked like it could have been a lot more at the start. Yeah, it was. And that's one thing Boston College was able to do on those jet sweeps. They hand the ball to their speed guy. And I split out wide of their tight ends to get another big blocker on the edge. Pick up their three yards. Brown rolling. Kobe White with another catch incomplete. Skipped off the carpet. See if he holds that one in. Very close. He doesn't seem to be arguing it very vociferously. Yeah, yeah. no. Clearly incomplete. Got to argue that one. 
like that he's an acting school there. Third and seven. Here's Bailey on the dump off. Eludes one tackler. Dances his way down the sideline. Where will they mark him out? That's going to be a big key here. Short. He's going to be about three yards shy. And this will bring up a fourth down. See where he goes out. But again, we go back to the play calling by Mike Bajaki, and usually he's doing that to, to set up a fourth down where he's going to go for it. But it looks like they're bringing the kicking team on the field with only a three-point deficit. Really going to put the ball in the hands of Bumeri, their kicker. 44-yard attempt for Bumeri. Well, on the foot of Bumeri, I could say. Good call. Yes, this will be his longest of the year. He had a whistle before, and Bumeri smartly decides to give it a go just as a practice. Right, the ball being snapped. Delay game. Offense. Well, Five that's wow. an interesting. Down. You see Adazio. He's looking at Ricky Brown, his yeah, not special happy teams about that. coordinator. That's going to move BC back five yards. Now do they still go with Bumeri? You saw the kick that he he boomed it through the uprights after the whistle. Bumeri told Coach before the season, 33 yards and in, meaning the ball at the 33. I'm money. 48 on this attempt. This would be a career long for Bumeri. Snaps oh, low. snaps low. Grosso, the quarterback, has an opportunity downfield, and it's incomplete. An opportunity goes by the wayside for BC. Wing still leads by three. Back here at Alumni Stadium, Boston College, failed opportunity to tie this game up with a long field goal. That's Aiden Livingston, the freshman, true freshman, long snapper, number 46. Talking to John Tessitore, Joe's kid, giving him a word of encouragement after a snap that went awry and caused the field goal attempt to be completely blown up. The end result, Ray Forrest now back with the football. Newman looking for somewhere to go. Shakes the initial tackler. Nice pickup by Newman. This kid can run five yards. He's closing in on 100 yards rushing today. Yeah, he really can. And the only, the reason why he had to make so many moves is because John Lamont once again reads that it's going to be that replay, and he just goes as hard as he can through the running back. Goes up that play. Talk about Newman shifting this. That's what it was able to get him to gain yards and pick up a good carry, but really good play by John Lamont early in the down. Cover two. Lots of time for Newman. Ball up in the air. Almost intercepted. Reflected the line of scrimmage. And Lamont was there. Boy, you think there would have been some talking going on between he and Newman and he picked off that one? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it looks like that might have been hit by the offensive lineman. So watch 99 here. He gets his hand up. And as the ball is thrown, it actually bounces off, off the helmet. helmet. Bounces off the offensive lineman's helmet. And Valdez applying the pressure again. He's been getting in that backfield, forcing an errant throw, and Boston College looks like they're going to get the ball back. Yeah, Valdez has been really big. We highlighted him a little bit earlier, but to be able to step up as a redshirt sophomore, and he brings an intensity. We've seen him in practice. He is serious. He is focused. He is all about getting this defense better, and he's lived in Wake Forest backfield this game. So while Newman has had so much success running the football today, through the passing game, it's been a struggle like he hasn't really experienced all year to this point. Maggio, another big kick. Leaving. Forced back, and this one's going to bounce and go out of bounds near the 20-yard line. 43-yard punt, nothing on the return. Boston College will take over. Tonight, all ACC will have all the scores, highlights, breakdowns. From the day's action on the gridiron, nobody covers the ACC like we do. It's 10.30 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Dallin, Mark, EJ, Eric, they're all in the studio checking out this game and the others going on right now. North Carolina, Clemson in a tight one. Virginia, Notre Dame in a tight one. And then don't forget, coming up next, we've got Florida State and NC State down at Doak. Comparison of these two teams.
Boston College after a rough start and a pick thrown by Anthony Brown. He's really settled down and they've been able to move the football. They just haven't been able to put points on the board to finish these drives. That's Clines. The wide out who also played a lot of running back in his career here at Boston College. Picking up just a couple. And it's interesting, that plays a tendency breaker too. Talk about Mike Bajakin, he's very aware of a short side of the field, means to the hash, into the boundary, and the wide side. They ran the jet sweep into the boundary, which is rare to change up the tendency. Fake to Dillon. Brown being chased. Just throws it over the head of his receiver to live for another day. Guys, I was standing on the Boston College sidelines, and after the defense made that play and got the offense back out there, A.J. Brown and Anthony Dillon just looked right at each other and said, this is it. We've got to go here. No stopping. So they know that right now this is a big, important drive for them to try and get back in on top. And what that out makes this third down huge for them to keep this drive going and so they don't have to punt the football from deep in their own territory back to wait. Save Flowers. Trying to connect instead with his tight end. Hunter Long and the two of them can't connect and they'll have to do just that. Punt it right back to Wake Forest and Jamie Newman. I think if Anthony Brown was a little bit more patient on that play, he had Zay Flowers just streaking across the field with a couple yards on his defender. He got the ball out quick to his number one read, was able, able to get through his progression. Now Boston College is going to have to punt back to Wake Forest who has not been able to move the ball this quarter too well. Carlson spins it out to Surratt. He'll have room to run. Back down at the 44-yard line. 50 yards on the kick. 17 on the return. Wake Forest with another opportunity when we come back. Boston College trails. Early part of the fourth quarter by three points. Their defense, though, has really been... You know, they've been all over Newman, maybe more so than Newman's had to deal with a defense like this all year long. Yeah, and they've decided to take some risks, and they want to get Newman off his spot. They've had pressure all day. You see Mike Palmer coming off the edge. That's where he got hurt a little bit. But ha having Newman be able to pull down the ball and run, and then they're coming right up the middle with good five-man looks, dropping a guy out, bringing another guy in the middle, and they're only able to do that because they're risking on the outside. They're putting Brandon Sebastian, Jason Matry, Tate Haynes, Elijah Jones in one-on-one -on -one coverage with the wide receivers and those cornerbacks have held up well tonight for the most part. Newman's passing yards on the day well below his season average but he is the leading rusher for Wake Forest over 90 yards in this game. Boston College showing pressure at the bottom of your screen. Newman looking to throw. Pressure coming. The ball is free. Boston College picks it up. That's Joe Spiraccio. This will obviously be replayed, but John Lamont was the man to knock the ball out of Newman's hands, and Sparaccio was there. Watch John Lamont just lower his shoulder and walk the blocker directly back into the quarterback. John this Lamont. one's going to be reviewed to see if his arm was going forward. It looks to me like the arm was moving forward. Yeah, it was, and that'll be reviewed, and I think... That'll come back as an incomplete pass, but just throwing on the field is a fumble. The previous play is under review. That power move by Lamont to go right through the blocker and get to Newman is impressive. Listen to some of the all-time great pass rushers. He talked to Strahan, and he always talks about you got to show them the bull rush first, and then that sets up everything else. If they don't know you have a bull rush, they can't respect it. Well, John Lamont has just done bull rush after bull rush after bull rush today against these running backs. It's worked out really well. Lamont and Newman, we talked about it tonight. Cousins, both hailing from Graham, North Carolina. Lamont's the junior. Newman is as well. So close growing up. Now an opportunity to face off against each other with this game squarely on the line here in the last 11 minutes and 14 seconds. We talked about how big it is. Wake gets next week off, and they get three straight at home. Boston College, if they win today, they're 2-0 in ACC play. What better way to have this set up in the fourth quarter, getting down At the end of the game. It's a close one. Lots of pressure on Newman, and 
handled it pretty well yeah. up until this point, but man. He's been able to scramble a lot and make plays yeah. when things break down. And that's his, that's his agility and his. After further review, the quarterback's arm was going forward when the ball was released, therefore it's an incomplete pass. Dwayne Hyde, our referee, clears things up for us. Wake Forest continues on this drive, although it'll be second down and long now. And you can see Newman has been pressured all day long. BC's done a very good job coming with the pressure up the middle. Defensive coordinator Bill Sheridan said, I'm going to bring five in this game, and he's been able to do it with four and five. Empty backfield for Newman. Hinton in stride. Inside the 30-yard line, down to the 30, right at the 30-yard line, 26 yards on the catch by him. Yeah, that hammy looks pretty good. Watching the side of your screen, you see a wide receiver running free because the linebacker Sparacio is supposed to stay inside of number two. You need to stay inside leverage on your man and carry him all the way to get to another defender. He did not do that on that play. Wound up with a big completion by Wake Forest. Give to Carney, patiently bounces it outside. Brought down, gain of three yards. Brandon Sebastian did a nice job of tackling the big back from his cornerback spot. We talked about Joseph Sparacio. He's he's only he's playing right now because Isaiah McDuffie, their leader on defense, has been injured for the first part of this season. He's had a really good start to his career. However, a few plays like that, those come with experience. You know when you're going to be attacked a certain way. There he got exposed. Right to Carney. On the Surratt. Incomplete. Sebastian on the coverage. What a great play by Brandon Sebastian. He knows that he is going against a wide receiver who's a little bit taller than him, and he is taught, put your hand right through the pocket that is created by the hands of the wide receiver. He does it, knocks the ball out, forces a big third down for Wake Forest. Showing double linebacker pressure right up the middle and see if they come or if they're just bluffing and drop back out. Mm. Try to find Washington. Flags all over the place. We got flags down here by Washington. We got flags where the pocket was. Looks like there could have been a clipping block high low in the line of scrimmage and maybe pass interference on the outside but there are two fouls on the play one by each team personal foul illegal chop block offense by the running back in alignment holding defense number three those penalties will offset third down Jason Matry doesn't like the call. Guilty of the infraction, bringing down Washington. Let's see the chop block first. Yeah, and at this, you're allowed to cut linebackers coming in, but when you have a guy engaged, where you see in the middle, number 60 was engaged with the linebacker, running back can't hit him low there. Now the BC fans are on their feet for this third down. Trying to find Washington. Touchdown! What a grab by Scotty Washington. This is what he does so well. He, he mosses people. You go back to that old term that Randy Moss created. Well, he is taking that to this level in college football. And watch him go up. Really good defense by Jason Matry. But Washington's hands are so strong. He's a former basketball player. He's used to going for those jump balls. Comes down, controls that with his hands all the way to the ground. Great pass by Jamie Newman. An even better catch by Scotty Washington. Eva on for the try to increase Wake Forest lead to 10 with under 10 minutes to play here in this contest. You say mossing, you know my history. I prefer Megatroning. That's what Washington <laughs> did, and it gave his team the 10 point cushion to go in this contest and a lot of football still to be played. These big time receivers. 
just can't keep them down for an entire game. They're going to step up and make big plays, even when the passing game may not be working as well as it has for the season so far. Skiba going to kick this one out of bounds, and BC now will catch a break with field position. Surratt, heck of a catch in the first half. Washington, heck of a catch here just moments ago. First Surratt. Like a Hollywood couple, these two going up top and making big catches. That one, he just kind of bullies with one arm. And then Washington going all the way up top and coming down with the football. These guys are a tandem that you have got to respect on the outside for this Wake Forest team. They try to mess around with you so much, your eyes in the middle, and then on the outside, big one-two punch. Big drive for Boston College now. Dylan, he looked to get it started. Crashes into the line, keeps his feet. He'll pick up about five on first down. Four defenders that are just trying to stop A.J. Dillon from moving forward. And as we saw in that first half, and really a couple times here in the second, too, once he gets past that first wave of defenders, like that, right there, past midfield, flip dogs the defender, brought down to the 42. Great block by the center, Alex Winstrom on that play to free up the gap on the stunting defensive lineman. And A.J. Dillon sees it, uses his patience, and explodes through that line of scrimmage. He's got 144 yards now. He's out of the end zone, though. Boston College needs that to change. Garrison in motion. They hand off to Dillon, stretching it. Now turns up field. He's just getting chunks now. Sternad with the tackle, but not before Dylan gains nine. He'll catch a break here. Gosh, that's, it's just so good by BC's offense. And we think, okay, A.J. Dillon has the ball. He's doing it himself. But you're watching the blocking on the outside by Kobe White, wide receiver, and the tight ends able to get him those extra yards. Bailey has an opening, keeps his feet flag, thrown way into the uh, defensive backfield. Looks like Wake might have had too many mem uh, too many players on the field. Illegal substitution, defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play, first down. Coach Clawson extremely unhappy about that call. He's saying that the ref had his hands extended, meaning that Boston College would have substituted, so then Wake Forest had his chance, but Boston College didn't substitute. DC takes the result of the play. And now we get another flag. This time it looks like BC is going to be guilty of forcing Wake uh, or pushing, pulling Wake off sides. There is no foul on the play. The ball is not yet marked ready for play. First down. All right, now we're settling it all up, figuring it out. You're exactly right. Clawson was saying that. Still talking about the last call. First and ten for Boston College. Gives it Bailey. Spun down. Boogie Basham. But he still gets three on the carry. Boogie Basham does everything he can to get down big David Bailey and ends up launching him forward for a few extra yards. Clock ticking down to eight minutes to play. Dylan in the game. He takes the handoff. Smashes into the defense. Three yards. That old saying, three yards in a cloud of dust. That's what Boston College's offense is doing right now. There's no dust, it's just rubber pellets flying around. But they're grinding it out on the ground, going back to what they do so well. Number one in the ACC in rushing, and they're showing it right now in this big drive in the fourth quarter. Feeding Dylan. This time, Wake Forest is there. Still surges, though, and keeps his feet moving the pile. Three yards after it looked like nothing was there. So it gives Boston College now an opportunity on third and short. Yeah, they're going to go fast again. Look for that quarterback sneak on fourth down. Fourth down. My, I'm sorry. Fourth down in the yard. Going with that sneak and Brown, the pile just pushes. And why not? If your offensive line is going to get that much push on a quarterback sneak, that should be every single time you have third and one or fourth and one. Officials come out for injury. I mean, look at that. You see the offensive center and the offensive guard. Look at Frable sitting there on the yard line. He's about four yards downfield. Boogie Basham down right now for Wake Forest. As the training staff looks at him, we'll take a break. Coming right back. 
Wake Forest by 10. Beautiful night here in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Sun setting over the reservoir. Cathedral here on campus. Boston College looking to keep this drive going. Another set of downs for A.J. Dillon and company. Dillon cuts it back. Runs into his own man. He won't pick up much. Ternat is there after a one-yard gain. Boogie Basham did a great job of getting up field and causing A.J. Dillon to cut up the middle. Looked like it could have even been a holding call on him, but good job in the backfield by Basham, who is third in the ACC in sacks and fourth in yeah. tackles for loss. I mentioned Basham was shaken up on that last play. It was Suleiman Kamara, 90, not nine, so Basham still in the game. Bailey in the game. Oh, for the pass. the pass. And he's got an open receiver. That's his tight end and a touchdown. <laughs> Chris Garrison broke free, 16 yards for the score. BC right back in it. Just when you think you've seen it all from Boston College, they have another person throw the ball. We've seen Gobe White throw it this year. We've seen C.J. Lewis throw it this year. This time, David Bailey on the sweep threw the ball up, and you don't you don't usually see it to a tight end. A lot of times, it's to your star receiver, but the star receivers come out of that tight end room at Boston College. Mary with the try, splits the uprights. Boston College gets back to within three. Chris Garrison on the end of the line of scrimmage fakes like he's blocking and then sneaks in past and yeah, really good ball. Really good ball by David Bailey. And that, it doesn't that look <laughs> warm. Horrific, but well, that matters that the ball got there. Oh, How many times yes. do you see a player who is not a quarterback throw the ball too high? He's got a wide yeah. open receiver and he just loses his mind a little bit and gets too anxious and throws it too high. That one was right on the money. And he was run, rolling out to his right, throwing the ball on the move. David Bailey's going to have a great quarterback rating after this one. Three-point game. Dude, with Chris. Touchdown. Yeah, close. As we expected all along. Getting jacked up here in the booth, Chris. Did that Oreo provide you enough energy? Yeah, it did. Salad at halftime, like some people did. Out of the back of the end zone, 25 yard line. Wake Forest and Jamie Newman will have an opportunity to do two things kill the clock and put some more points on the board. Don't miss the huddle. Our signature football show, hosted by Jack Collinsworth, analyst Eric McLean, DJ Manuel, Mark Richt, all on hand, previewing the weekend slate of games and keeping you up to date on all things ACC football. Live next Friday night at 8 Eastern. Saturday at the special time of 3 Eastern this upcoming Saturday. It's all right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. BC defense has to get this powerful Wake Forest offense off the field. Newman, on the other hand, wants to keep that clock ticking. Gets it to his tight end, Jack Frudenthal, for a minimal gain on first down of four yards. But it keeps the clock moving. That was a great job by Jamie Newman recognizing the blitz that Boston College has run so frequently and replacing the blitz with the ball to his big tight end. Newman will look to run. Avoids one tackle. Picks up five. It'll bring up third and a yard. This is a huge third down here. E.J. Ram. Ram has had a huge game at that defensive tackle position. That nose guard getting off blocks, getting to the ball carrier. Big stop there. Now it's third and one for Wake Forest. Boston College fans are on their feet, stomping. Getting loud. Demon Deacons 14 to 20 on third down tonight. Newman's going to keep it himself. Bounces off a tackler and picks up the first down. Good, tough run by Jamie Newman under big pressure. Wake Forest is no stranger to close games in the fourth quarter. They had a bunch of close ones so far this year. UNC, Utah State earlier, and they're 2-0 and in those one-game scores. Career high, 102 yards rushing on the night for Jamie Newman. And that clock continues to tick. You see all three timeouts in their pocket. Rolls for a good three yards. Sparaccio brought him down. 
We talked a lot about Boston College's running backs getting low and running over their shoulders. But Cade Carney does the same thing when he gets the ball in the game. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage and just kind of rolls forward for another game. Newman and Wake Forest in no hurry to snap this ball. Collins showing the pressure at the top of the screen. Dropping back. Carney again. Brought down after a one-yard pickup, another huge third down. And John Lamont again is just seeing the gap and just putting his shoulder down and putting licks on the ball carrier. Do you take a chance if you're Wake Forest here? Do you continue to play conservatively? Third and six for Newman. Boston College showing pressure up the middle. Going to be one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with the wide receivers. He backs off the pressure. Newman trying to hit his receiver and does. In the double coverage, Hinton comes down with it, a nine-yard pickup and a first down. Newman created this play by seeing the mismatch. A linebacker on hitting the wide receiver and just throws the ball out in front, knowing where his wide receiver can get to it. And there's nothing Joe Sparacio can do but chase that ball down and hope for an underthrown pass. Fresh set of downs for the Demon Deacons in BC territory. Again, Newman looks to the sideline, letting that clock tick. To give to Carney. Just looks for a crease. No gain on the play. Crawford was there to bring him down. Good to see Tanner Crawford back in the game after going out with an injury earlier. Time out. Boston College. Now their BC. First. Time out of the half. Opting to use their first time out with no gain on first down, setting up a second down and 10 with 3.09 left. We're coming right back, folks. 3.09 remaining in this contest. Wake Forest trying to work the clock down. That's Boomeri, the kicker for Boston College, hoping for another opportunity as he warms up. He's got to get that football back to his offense first, though. And Wake Forest and Jamie Newman, they've got designs on keeping it for the rest of the way. Wake Forest, an empty formation, spreads them all the way out. Jamie Newman is still a run threat in this formation. Looking to pass. Surratt gets down. Short of the first down, Brandon Sebastian is there to bring him down. And Boston College uses their second timeout. Timeout. Boston College, their second timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. So there's Steve Adazio talking with his team about what they plan on doing. Bill Sheridan, the defensive coordinator, obviously very keyed in on this call right here. What are you doing if you're Boston College? You got to get the football back here, third and fourth. Yeah, you do. And this is a huge play. I mean, this could be the play of the game for Boston College's defense. It's only four or five yards you need to gain. You need to gain four and a half yards to get this first down by Wake. Wouldn't be surprised if Boston College comes after Wake Forest again on this third down. Had some pretty good matchups on the outside. Just can't get beat deep. Fans on their feet at Alumni Stadium. Newman over the middle, complete. Frudenthal with the catch and the first down. Sparacio again in cover, just finds himself behind the tight end. He needs to stay inside leverage on that, but really good play call, really good play design, anticipating a blitz and getting the tight end open over the middle. Big story in this fourth quarter. Boston College unable to get their defense off the field on third down. Wake three for three on third down on this drive. Yeah, third down conversions extend drive. They keep the defense on the field. And as good as you play on first and second down, it doesn't matter if you extend the drives and let them get first downs on third. Now that clock with just one timeout remaining for BC. Big time enemies. False start. Rare pre-snap penalty for Wake. Ball start. Offense on the right guard. Five-yard penalty. 
first down. The game clock will start on the snap. This is the third down play. You see the blitzers right over the middle, and you always want to replace the blitz with the football. Jamie Newman identifies the blitz, finds out where it's coming from, and IDs his target directly over the middle. Makes a perfect pass to his tight end in stride to gain that first down. They have been fantastic. Well, they've been good all season long. They've been great today on third down. Carney, the senior, holding on to that football. Lamont is there to make the stop. Pick up of a yard on the play. BC will use their third and final timeout. timeout. Boston College, their third and final timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. They coming up next. NC State, Florida State, Doe Campbell, our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. It's also available on the ESPN app. Just continuing what is a huge day today in this conference. This game is big. North Carolina and Clemson. Right now, Clemson on top by seven. Under two minutes to go in that one. Notre Dame has taken over a bit over Virginia. 28-17, ND on top right now, early in the fourth quarter. So the Hoos have an opportunity to get back in this one. BC has an opportunity to get back in this one, but they got to get this defense off the field. And with just two minutes and 11 seconds left, Jamie Newman and company know one more first down. This one's in the bag. Absolutely. And Boston College does the right thing on first down once again. Now Wake Forest and Jamie Newman are behind the sticks. This is a get back on track down. They want to keep the clock running, but more importantly, they want to create a third and manageable so they continue this drive and get points on the board. Looks like Newman they're a wildcat now. formation. Yeah, Newman has taken off. He's split at the top of the screen, and Carney's just going to keep this football spinning, picking up what he can before Brandon Sebastian brings him down. It'll be a pickup of two yards. Clock under two minutes. We saw when we did the Kansas game a few weeks ago, Boston College's defense was out of their gaps. Their Simons weren't right. Today, they have corrected all of those problems. And you see time and time again, the right fits on blocks, being in the right place at the right time. That time, Brandon Sebastian stayed on the outside to make that tackle. And now a huge third down for Jamie Newman. Newman employs his, his offensive line to get set. To give the Carney up the middle, powers his way for four yards. Ram is there to make the stop. The clock will continue to run here, and Wake facing a fourth down. This is kind of that fringe era for area for Wake. It's fourth in a really long distance, but it might be out of field goal range for their kicker, and might not make too much sense to punt the ball in case there's a touchback. To be the safe play, but could be the play that they decide to choose going for it on fourth down. Wake, and we talked with Coach Clawson earlier in the week about how they're just two plays away from being two and two on the year, but they, to their credit, made the plays to get them to four and oh in close games to open the year against Utah State. Delay a game, offense. And North Five Carolina. Fourth down. They started the year Boston against a very College good offensive team in Utah State start. and loved their quarterback, and they were able to make the play with Hinton at the end of the game to get the W. And then certainly, as we're seeing today, North Carolina, no pushover. Clemson having all kinds of trouble with them, and Carolina, the controversial finish here, back running out of bounds. Was there one second? Max seemed to think there was a second. The official said, that's it. So Wake Forest and Coach Clawson outlasting the heels. And they're 4-0 on the year. Can they do the same against Boston College? Maggio just says, I'm going to punt it and hope to bury them deep. And they do. What a play by this special teams group that has been so good all year. Christian Beal-Smith down it inside the five-yard line. And Dom Maggio is one of the best punters in the league. And when you have someone who can the pin... Someone who can pin some, the other team down inside the 10. That's when you don't go for it on fourth down. Put the ball in the hands of a playmaker, and this playmaker was their punter, Dom Maggio. Dom Maggio is on the Ray Guy watch list, getting congratulations from his teammates. Now 95 yards away, Boston College, just 28 seconds. We need to get 75 yards in this drive instead of a field goal. 
Brown underneath. That's Flowers. He looks to get out of bounds. Hammered, and he does get out of bounds. Now, Sear Green <laughs> made him pay for that eight yard gain. He absolutely leveled him. And interestingly enough, I think the clock should still be running, even though he went out of bounds. It looked like his forward progress was stopped by the hit and launched out of bounds backwards. Wake rushes just three Bailey's got to get out of bounds. Picks up the first down, runs over a tackler, gets out in front of the 30-yard line. But that clock, they're going to have to get big chunks. Inside of 10 seconds. Brown tries to find Flowers just over his head. Now four seconds left on the clock. You do have a flag on the play. Let's check the call. An eligible receiver, field, offense, number nine, five-yard penalty, still second down. Game clock will start on the snap. Really, Kobe White was called for it. But. Yeah, nope. It's it's because the way they lined up, they had two wide receivers on the line of scrimmage, meaning that the inside receiver was covered up. Yep. So he can't. He's not eligible. So that's part of the reason why hurry up is so difficult. Time out. Wait for their first time out of the half. Thirty second. Time out. Coach Clawson wants to make sure there is no mistake on this play. Final play of the game. And he wants to talk it over with his defense. Well, we just saw a great play on special teams by Wake Forest. Dom Maggio and Christian Beal Smith downing the ball inside the five. And that may be the difference in this game. Great play by Wake Forest. And earlier in the day, Boston College had an opportunity here with a field goal that at the time would have tied the game. And they had a penalty first to move him back an additional five yards and then the long snap went awry and yeah coach Adazio knows that was an opportunity golden opportunity they needed to take advantage of and there's another pre-snap penalty that moved them out of what would be easy field goal range and and obviously the bot snap and now Boston College has one play what are you gonna do you got it lateral get the ball downfield Brown underneath Lines with the ladder to Bailey. He'll throw it across the field as Brown has some blockers in front of him. Tried to get it to Garrison and it goes out of bounds. And Wake Forest will improve it to 5 0 on the season. And what a stand by Wake Forest at the end of the game. They were able to. It's a fumble out of bounds. Game is over. They drove down the field and got the points when they needed it the most. And Boston College was exposed consistently on third down and credit to Wake.